draft. And it will be Ringo. So with Ringo, I think most likely they're trying to grab up another Sky or a Vox for their team. And this is something Vertical Black plays quite often. All right, and it is a Vox pick coming out. Uh, we've seen Rick's play a phenomenal Vox. We've seen Best Truck and Ave on Vox as well. Yeah, but HH Kinetic, like, you never see them, like, banning out Adagio, which they're very well known for. But this is the thing, because Vertical Black has run a bunch of those buff compositions, and they've done it really well. All right, we see a crawl coming out. Bit of a trend now. Well, it looks like they're like swapping each sides with each other because <laughs> usually the crawl will be on vertical black and the Vox will be taken by Kinetic really early. All right, so we'll wait to see what the next pick is. It is a Catherine. Are they setting up a uh, pretty late game scaling comp of their own? Yeah, and I think Kinetic, they really have a good approach to this. So for their last pick, they're probably going to try and secure somebody that can help them like transition through that early game phase. Uh, so who might you have your eye on for that purpose? To be honest, like I want somebody that's able to rotate down really quickly. And because Ringo's already out of the picture, you have heroes like Glaive, you have heroes like Koshka. When played in lane, actually are very efficient. And it's a pedal pick. Nice to see her showing up a couple times. So with this one, Vertical Black, they do have two range and they have a lot of kiting potential. But what I see here is I think that, um, that Arden is going to be too far ahead uh, most of the time. And he might get caught off guard, so this is something that Vertical Black has to watch out for. All right, we'll see if Petal can keep her distance from the crawl. With the call, let's go to our casters. Very much, guys. We are going to be getting into game number two here momentarily. A Scarf as the final pick, rounding out with that composition to late game scaling. And, you know, we talked about it in our first set of three, where if you can't get onto that Scarf, you have a lot of trouble Unfortunately for Vertical Black, I don't see a lot of ways to really jump onto Scarf and take Scarf out immediately. So this could be really troublesome for Vertical Black if they don't have a strong early game. Yeah, I mean, uh, bring in the EU meta over here to NA, and uh, we've seen so much success out of it in the past. Uh, just a matter of time if we see if HH Kinetic can go ahead and seal the deal with this lineup. Uh, but when, when you look at across the board what uh, what we have for Vertigo Black, do you feel that it's a, a strong comp going up against that? I do like the Vertigo Black composition here because of the fact that you know they need to be able to perform early, and Petal will definitely be able to do a lot of work early on against this Kroll Catherine as long as they play it right. Uh, it, it's it's one that, like I said, it's it's a little surprising to me that Halcyon Hammers picked such a late game focused composition, knowing that they're up against a team that you know, regularly and historically has a little bit of difficulty in the early game. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, maybe they just feel confident with it, and uh, maybe it's a wild card that they thought Vertigo wouldn't expect. Uh, with that said, Fear Poseidon, Sue Generis have been up in the lane. They're going to poke on Ricks a little bit. Just to let them know they are here, and they need to respect these rotations constantly. Um, but, you know, when you get a, a situation like that and they come up and just poke, it just gets it in the back of your mind that you have to, like, have that safe positioning, which can cause you to miss some last hits. Yeah, and that's actually a small little thing that uh, you'll see a lot with a Kroll team, a uh, team that picks a Kroll. They didn't go to the shop after their first clear. They went straight up into the lane. And that's specifically to avoid an early fight at the jungle shop uh, because Kroll, again, not the strongest at level one and two. So a really smart play. Again, House and Hammers, their early game, their their actual play and decision making has been phenomenal. But right now, Swedish Generous taking a lot of damage from Ricks. And let's see, is... You know, Ricks, will he be that difference maker? Will he be enough to bring this team back into an even series and push us to our first game three of the day? Well, I mean, when we talk about Ricks, these guys said that potentially Ricks could be considered the most underrated player in a mm -hmm. uh, with his potential and how people are stacking up against him. So, I mean, this guy can get so much done if given the opportunity. Chrissy taking a bit of damage there from Beowulf. He's going to be okay, but I think at this point in the game, we it was like 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then match one, so a little bit different story. Of course, a lot of that uh, due to the drafts that we have here. Yeah, definitely a much more passive draft. Uh, taking a look down the jungle, we see Fear Poseidon actually waiting for his roam to come and start up this uh, double back camp. Obviously, wanting to get that extra gold from the Iron Guard contract. Uh, the smart play there is doing just that, waiting for your roamer. Even if it's yep. a little, even if you have to stand around for a little bit, it's still better to get that extra gold. 
Uh, especially in that situation, because if he had started those camps early, yeah, you know, yeah, you clear the jungle a little bit quicker. Yeah. But what are you going to do afterwards? There was, yeah. There's really nothing available. So you, you feel like you're not getting anything out of it, but technically your team's getting more if yeah. you do wait. Yeah, the invade coming in from Vertigo Black, but Fear Poseidon does get the Spectral Smite off, st taking away that camp, securing it for himself, and not letting that invade really amount to much. Looks like they will be looking for these forward shop camps and will be able to steal those away at least. So, you know, getting something out of it at, at the very least. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, with that, both teams are able uh, to just kind of pacify for a second. And uh, as we look at the, the farm here in lane, pretty even, 25 to, to 26, uh, Ricks to Chrissy. And uh, you kind of expect that with that matchup, yeah? Yeah, definitely uh, to be expected. Uh, Fear Poseidon rushed down the Shiver Steel first item on Kroll. Uh, it's what we've seen a couple of times here as well. So uh, it, it's an interesting one because it really kind of shows your hand of how you're going to try and play, uh, that you're really just looking to keep them in one place and focusing <laughs> yeah. on those stacks and not so much on the pure basic attack damage. Well, I mean, even you would have predicted that because we, every time we have the Scarf, <laughs> you say that all he has yep. to do is just kind of hold someone in place just a little it's bit. It's all about that peel. Yep. That's, that's why it's done. It's it's a big utility thing, you know, it, and it's there's really two big philosophies on a curl build if you're going weapon power, which you would expect with a Scarf is that you either are going for the peel, just trying to keep someone in place, get that huge spectral smite with full stacks, or you build straight weapon power, you know, get the Sorrow Blade first, and you're just going for the basic oh, we got damage. First one. But yeah. my goodness, in the lane, best Chuck NA getting the kill onto Sui Generous, and that's going to be finally a first blood at four and a half minutes. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, they get the first blood here. Not too big of a deal to have Catherine go down like that, but I think that they're going to realize that the damage potential is definitely there out of that pedal. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with the uh, Heavy Prism and two Crystal Bits as well, that's going to be uh, pretty serious damage from those Munions. It's very uh, almost unexpected damage because you can, you take that first hit from the basic attack and you're like, oh, that's not that bad. And then all of a sudden three <laughs> Munions bite you and you know, rah, rah, rah. a huge chunk of your health is gone. You're like, wait, how did that happen? But uh, it's definitely something you have to keep your eye on when there is a pedal. And Headlong into Beowulf. Beowulf does get stunned up. And it looks like HHK is going to go ahead and retreat themselves back into a better position. Those Munions just getting eaten alive there by that fire. Uh, they will quickly respawn. But it looks like Vertigo Black, they are posturing very aggressively here in the jungle. Yeah, that's the other thing with the pedal is those Munions. Keeping the Munions alive. Uh, Scarf, obviously a very good counter against it because the AoE damage from the fire. But... That's it. You know, Kroll is horrible at taking out <laughs> Munions as he only has single target. So it, it's going to rely a lot on the positioning of Chrissy, as you know, Scarf games pretty much always do, as this is going to be the gold mine and possibly a fight coming off of it. Good job at Vertigo Black peeling away from the objective as they realized that Hellscan Hammers was coming down. And uh, looks like neither team really wants to go all in on this here. Yeah, I mean, well, you got that comes down to the scout trap right there. Uh, out of Kinetic, it saved that gold mine. If they didn't have that vision, the gold mine gets taken, but they see it, they move down and defend it. Fear Poseidon taking a bit of damage here. Beowulf's locked onto him, but they quickly switch over to Catherine. Catherine might go down, but it's Fear Poseidon's jump right back in, and uh, he gets blown up very quickly. Uh, looks like Petal's going to be credited for that kill, and uh, Sweet Generis has moved back under a turret. These guys are going to be able to get out of there, but. Man, I, uh, that's pretty aggressive out of Fear Poseidon. Yeah, Fear Poseidon going in really deep without really much defense other than the health. And uh, Rix sitting on a Sorrow Blade already, uh, along with obviously the damage from Petal and her Munions doing more than enough damage to secure that second kill. And now we see the minion mine, the forward minion mine, mine being taken away. I love seeing a team capture the enemy's minion mine first because it just denies them so much gold. Yeah, it truly does, and uh, a nice pickup here. Uh, so this it's going to be a great feather in their cap that they've got that. And moving forward, we knew Kroll and uh, the Scarf do scale very well going into the late game. Do you think that this it's very important that the pressure comes out, or do they feel comfortable with the Vox that they can kind of just play evenly with them? I feel like for Vertigo, they don't have to be super aggressive. They can just, you know, when the late game comes around, they're going to have just as much damage. Uh, again, the the big thing is going to be on Chrissy's positioning on the Scarf, and of course, then Best Chuck and A's positioning on this pedal, which, as we've heard from Rome before the game, Best Chuck and A, his positioning, that's what he's known for. He's absolutely phenomenal with it. So it, 
it's going to be a really interesting one the later this game goes. But right now, this is a pretty good lead that Vertigo Black have built up. About 2,000 gold at 8 minutes. And it looks like they're trying to collapse again. But uh, Sweet Generous going to be coming up to make sure there's a little bit of safety for Chrissy. Yep, here to back up his ally and... You know, just a completely different story from, from game one here into game two. Uh, Vertigo Black looking very strong, and you got to imagine a lot of it is the fact that Rix is in here and having a pretty good game so far. Yeah, definitely uh, doing wonders for this team. You know, we did here in that video, they talked about how their morale is one of their big concerns. And uh, so after that first loss, it really had to wonder if they were going to be able to come back from that. And now looks like AJ's going to find them, go for the gold mine again. Here comes a big fight. Yeah, the Dragon Fire Breath coming out and doing a lot of work, but not quite enough. It's Rix that's going to be stunned up and just mowed down. Oh, man, that was so quick as Krill gets those stacks up. Now he's locked onto Beowulf. They're chasing here. Beowulf's going to go down, and that's two kills for Halcyon Hammer's Kinetic. They've tied it up. Still down uh, over 2k gold, but you can see that the, they have the fight potential at this point, and uh, any misstep, they can capitalize on it. Oh, Sweet Generis needs to be so careful here. Honestly, I thought Sweet Generis was going to go down in that fight early on took so much damage right off the bat, but somehow managed to stay alive. Fear Poseidon, of course, getting those stacks up onto Rix and able to take him down with the smite. And then, of course, with Chrissy on the back lines, putting down the Spitfires. They were able to get the fight. They even up the kill to a piece and then pick up that immense gold payout. And just like that, you know, it was a 3K gold lead. It's now down to about 1.3K. So yeah. Hal Sand Hammer's a good job of turning things around when it was starting to look a little bit shaky for them. Yeah, it was looking a little bit shaky, but they do a great job there. And uh, it, it was nicely played that, you know, we saw Catherine dropping very low on health. And uh, it was so uh, the Scarf moves forward, and he's like, I'll, I'll take this up while <laughs> we secure gold mine. No big deal, guys. Yeah, very similar builds right now from Best Chuck and Chrissy. Uh, both of them getting that frost burn first, wanting that extra utility, the extra slow. It's so important for both of these teams is the controlling the enemy's move speed and, of course, their own move speed as well. Uh, that's going to be something that will be coming into play in almost every single fight is, you know, who's able to move around the fold, who's able to get into the positions that they want. Uh, that that's what every single fight is going to hinge on you know, really unless someone just gets completely caught out on their own Yeah, and I with these two teams with the level that they play at I don't expect to see that happening very frequently. Oh, we're gonna have a fight here as the ultimate coming out of scarf Those stun was to set up on the best Chuck Chrissy does get stunned up by that gauntlet there So that's what's able to slow them up a bit a little bit uh, just with pedal to go down They might have gotten more out of that in fact. I, I think they might have gotten two Yeah, well if it wasn't for that gauntlet that definitely would have been at least two kills going over for House and Hammer. So a great play there by Beowulf to uh, stop that ultimate in his tracks. And now this is Vertigo Black looking for a fight two on two. Yeah, they have chose the fight. The wait for it comes out. A nice block there by Chrissy to buy himself a little bit of time. But Rix, Rix getting the real damage in. Oh, and, fear Poseidon uh, coming in though. Oh, you yeah. must fear Poseidon. Yeah, absolutely. Vertigo Black, they are probably fearing Poseidon right now uh, as he's sitting at now 3-1-1 one, and one the as God he secures that second kill there and just coming in for the cleanup crew and picking those up. So great job from Fear Poseidon on this crawl. Uh, opportunistic, I think would be the right word to use in that situation. Yeah, who called the maid? <laughs> Clean up on aisle three. Fear Poseidon was there. And uh, yeah, so these guys doing a great job, and that's just one of the things, like you get into the rhythm of the game, and sometimes you, you are in that perfect rhythm, and it just showed up right there. He shows up at the perfect time and secures that fight. Yeah, so another couple kills for House and Hammers. They are behind in farm, uh, as it is, you look in the lane, 111 on Rix to the 89 of Chrissy, but it doesn't feel like it's that big of a deficit. Despite the fact that, you know, Rix has a solid, solid farm lead. Almost 20, uh, actually almost 30 far more than his lane opponent. It still feels like they're so close just because these teams are so evenly matched. Yeah, it really does. And, uh, you know, we are in the loser's bracket here, but sometimes you see some of your best matches uh, in this bracket because it's everything on the line for these teams. If they lose the series again, they're out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Winners moving forward, so you really see the A game coming out of these teams. And uh, they're stepping it up. They're not holding anything back here. 
Scout Traps everywhere. Vision is the name of the game right now. Flares on top of Scout Traps. And it uh, looks like Goldmine's probably going to be secured up here by Halcyon Hammer's Kinetic. Uh, Vertigo Black know what's going on, but they can't do much about it. Yeah, they, well, they may try and look for a fight afterwards. Nope, looks like they're just going to get some damage onto Sui Generous and then go down to the shop. That's a risky spot to be in because they can be so much damage coming out from it. And they're just going to keep going and uh, looking for possibly a pick here. But uh, Vertigo Black, they're not going to let that happen. No, they're not going to let it happen. Will oh, Rick. Oh, no. oh, he dodges oh. the hook from El's heart with the Sonic Zoom. Absolutely crucial that he got that. And, but now Sweet Generis, he's taking a lot of damage from that turret, but will just be able to get out, having to pop that Fountain of Renewal to keep himself alive. Yeah, Fountain too good. And uh, Bacon, you're one of the aficionados <laughs> on the Fountain. <laughs> And uh, can, you, can you let me know like a little bit about how that fountain? Because we talked, we had some debate oh, about how that We may have to hold up here because Vertigo Black, they're looking for an invade. I uh, don't know if they're going to get one yeah, build we'll the positioning, but there's a great silence. Oh, Rix just gets mowed over right there. As soon as he's held in place, they can just eat him alive. That forces best Chuck and a out. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think they get, well, do they get on top of him? The Warhorn is here. They're going to look for that Merciless Pursuit, the stun, and best Chuck and a, the spontaneous combustion coming out and just completely turning that around. That's one of the reasons that Petal's so underrated getting two. Are you kidding me? Best Chuck in A. What a player. Yeah, and meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Beowulf was able to get away from Fear Poseidon, who is now looking to steal away from camps. But uh, yeah, going back to that Fountain of Renewal, uh, arguably the strongest item in the game. It gives so much healing to the entire team based on how much health you're, you are missing at the time. So it's, it's one of those really high risk reward items, because if you wait until you're just about to die to pop it, you get so much more health from it but you're at risk of dying before you get that health exactly. back fully. Uh, it's such a risky item to hold on to until the end like that. But, you know, when you use it properly, it just it is an absolute game changer. And of course, a lot of times we see double fountain doesn't look like we'll be getting that coming out here from the side of Halcyon Hammers. Uh, maybe we might get one from uh, Vertigo Black as Kraken making her appearance onto the fold here at 15 minutes in dramatic fashion yeah but uh this is uh with the score tied six to six and just about two thousand gold separating these teams kraken is going to be such an important objective as, as it really almost always is yeah it's been a big story here so far in the tournament um the majority of teams that could take that kraken are securing games of course not 100 percent anymore as we we did see that uh perfect flawless victory for kraken broken <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's on the fold. Kraken is ready for some action. And any team that oversteps gets one or two heroes taken away could be vulnerable to having Kraken taken away from them and having some turrets pushed down. Yeah, Fear Poseidon. Uh, looking at the build there, an Aegis and an Atlas Pauldron picked up. Uh, so very, very tanky Kroll. It's so difficult to kill. The problem is it's so difficult for Kroll to get kills as well. Yeah, exactly. Not a whole lot of damage coming out. It's relying on the ability damage. Uh, from having full stacks is uh, pretty much entirely what Fear Poseidon is doing at this point. Yeah. And it, it's all that it's they're all in on just trying to protect Scarf. Oh, they might have a fight down here. It looks like they, yeah, they're not going to move on to the Catherine. But we do have double infusion out on Best Chuck and A. He just picked up that weapon infusion. So if they're able to find a target here in the next couple minutes, he really just going to eat them alive. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a lot of damage to deal with. I mean, it's the weapon power Vox, and we've seen a lot of crystal power Vox uh, pretty much almost every game thus far today. You know, with the three previous games, I think two of them had the crystal power Vox. Maybe yeah, yeah, there was one weapon power Vox, I think. Yeah, so now with the uh, Sorrow Blade and Tyrant's Monocle completed, and then of course, Best Chuck NA, Frostburn, and Broken Myth. Just so much damage coming out. The infusions are coming out. Double infusions onto Rix. Double infusions on Chrissy, oh, and they're looking for look the fight. The dragon's breath coming out. Best Jack and A is getting eaten. A lot of damage coming out there. The gauntlet is down. Now they turn it on to Chrissy. Chrissy will go down. Rix trying to dance around with that sonic zoom. He's going to go down. It's a one for one. Oh, oh. Best Jack and A, it's a trampoline. <laughs> Gets out of that from Hell's Heart, and he's going to be safe. What a player. 
and what a trampoline. It's a great ability, and I think a lot of people underestimate the utility of that. Oh, a huge call from Halcyon Hammers to go for this Kraken. Beowulf has an idea that it's happening. He wants to try and contest it, and just his presence there alone is enough to force him to back off. Uh, great. That trampoline, absolutely clutch. If that from Hell's Heart hits, that's another kill guaranteed. Uh, the one thing from House and Hammers was they they got so much damage onto Best Chuck and A from Chrissy, but it was only Chrissy on Best Chuck and A. Fear Poseidon and Swedish Nurse were on Ricks, and the fact that the damage was split may have cost them a little bit. Uh, I feel like if they had focused their damage, if you know, if Kroll had just run up and tried to hit pedal right off the bat, or even just thrown from Hell's Heart right off the start, yeah. they may have been able to secure both kills there. But uh, either way, it's still a a good fight for House and Hammers, uh, keeping them in this game. They are still behind by one turret, but this is just so close. Seven to seven, the gold lead is still hovering right around that one to two thousand mark uh, in favor of Vertigo Black. But you know the game gets tougher the later it goes. There's so much more pressure on both sides. You know, if you make one little mistake, it can yep. cost you the entire game. The spawn timer is getting longer exactly. and longer. And you got to look at Vertigo Black in that because they're the ones that are on the edge of elimination. If they lose this game, they're out of the tournament. House and Hammers, they at least have a little bit to, of leeway to play with. But of course, you never want to leave your entire tournament fate down to that final game three. There's just so much stress to deal with. And now Vertigo Black, they made a good rotation here. The aggressive play with Gauntlet coming out here, but they turn around with a big Dragonfire breath. Rick's actually stunned up from the Hell's Heart. That's what they needed. And uh, now the chase is on. They are under turret. Do they want to dive here, Bacon? It looks like they don't really want to commit under turret unless they see that opening. They don't smell blood, and so it's not going to happen. Yeah, the minion wave getting cleared out. Uh, pretty quickly forcing them back, but there goes Fear Poseidon. But Chrissy is so oh, low on the back lines. The fountain, fountain no big uh, deal. does get quite a bit of health back, so a good use there by Sui Generous. And uh, this is such a close game. Well, I mean, it, it really is a close game, and you can only imagine what's going through the minds of both of these teams right now, but more so for Vertigo Black, because if they drop this game after feeling strong throughout the whole time and already losing game one, I mean, they're out of the tournament. So right now, there's a lot of pressure on these guys to make sure that they don't make any mistakes and perform to their absolute best. Yeah, the goal differential is continuously getting smaller and smaller, though. It's now down to about five to 600 gold. Halcyon Hammers, they are closing that gap. The Aegis now picked up all three members of Vertigo and uh, all three members of Halcyon Hammers as well, having a reflex block available to them. So it's going to be so difficult to land any of the CC available to both sides. Uh, it's it's going to come down to just pure positioning at the end of the day, which is... You know, it's what you like. It's what we like to see. It's the yeah. those that positioning, the mechanical outplays. Uh, that's it's so much fun to see how the teams play out when you know it's all about moving together, trying to get the flank on your opponents, trying to just find that one spot that they have a lapse of vision in where you can take advantage of. And uh, we might be seeing a potential invade engage here because all six members are right around this choke point. Such a dangerous area to play around. Yeah, Chrissy just kind of poking with that Spitfire. Warhorn is activated, and Gauntlet canceled off. Great job there by Sweet Generis. And now it's Scarf oh winding up the ultimate. Rix is down. They're looking for more. Who's it going to be? It looks like Best Chuck and A is the target. He's getting mowed down. Munch stunned up. He got a block. He's going to trampoline a little bit. But this this is one dead pedal right here. I'm sorry, little deer pedal. You've been <laughs> killed. And now it's going to be the crack in here. So HH Kinetic taking a great fight. Like you said, you're probably going to get a Big objective off the back side of it in such an evenly match. Uh, it's just a really, really big deal that they get this. I love this play here, though, too. Fear Poseidon can easily slow out this Kraken. Kraken's doing, like, no damage. And look at that. Even with the shield up, it just, like, does the <laughs> tiny little sliver of the shield. And they send Chrissy and Sweet Generous into the lane to make sure they get that first turret down because you don't want Kraken to have to waste her time stopping at that very first turret. So Kraken's going to be making her way down the lane in just a few moments. Will Halcyon Hammers be able to get the uh, 
this TSM special, as we kind of call that, because the, the TSM squad has, they're so well known for getting Kraken four turrets win. And that's exactly what Halcyon Hammers is going to look to do here. All right, we can see if they're going to close it out. Kraken looks especially mad today, not happy to be disturbed, and starts hammering away on this turret. You can see Scarf just poking from range. It's really nice when you get that Kraken and you have a Scarf on your team. As long as positioning stays good on Chrissy, he can get so much damage down. <laughs> a little Spitfire going out towards the back there. Uh, but looks like these guys are going to be getting multiple turrets. Now, Silence does go down. Stun is oh, on to Rix. Rix can't afford to have this happen. Rix is down. 55 seconds for Rix. Kraken's in the base. They're on turret one. Now Beowulf eating a lot of damage here. Can they play this out absolutely perfectly, Bacon? 45 seconds on the respawn timer. Oh my oh, goodness. It looks like it's got to be Kraken. all she wrote here. Kraken still has a lot of health as well. They're getting a lot of damage on the Fear of Poseidon, but it Chrissy is matter. the one you need to target it because Chrissy matter. has so it's much gonna damage. It's going to be GG. And Halcyon Hammers Kinetic. The crowd Cinderella. is going crazy. The fan favorites Halcyon Hammers right now. They pick up 